If you are a student in engineering or computer science, there is most likely a chance where you currently are or you soon will be taking a course in numerical methods. Now, numerical methods are very important in engineering. They can be used to solve any problem. For example, if you have some differential equation which represents something that is occurring in real life, if you can solve it by hand, right? Like obviously when you implement this on a computer, the computer does not know, right, what the answer is. It's just a machine. So you have to kind of give it a way to approximate the answer. And numerical methods is one way of doing this. The, the Runge Kutta fourth order method or the RK4 method is a very popular way of solving these the differential equations, especially if they are non-linear, because there are many equations that you cannot solve by just simple methods. And we'll be first looking at the the formula of the RK4 and then going into an example. I'll be also showing you guys a C++ example in detail so you know what it looks like. So here we have an example of the RK4 formula. Now this formula is the overarching method and here we have a system of equations. We have F1 and F2. It's like saying dy over dz is equal to F1 of x, y and z and dz over something is equal to F2. You have to get a constants like k1, l1, k2, l2 and you have to do four of them. So basically what happens here is for let's look at k1. You have to do it at the value of x, y and z. For k2 you step forward by half. You go plus h over 2, right? So what's happening here is that the value of h, that is your step size. It's like saying delta t. So if you want to update every let's say 0.01 second h would be 0.01 okay so that is very important you have to approximate the function also at plus h over 2 and then for y and z you do y n plus k1 over 2 and then z n plus l1 over 2 in most equations in real life the value of x there is called time right it's just t so you will have something of f of t y and z or something so in this case you will have x10 plus t over 2 right so it'll be half time far forward so in this specific example you have two equations we will be also having two equations and then we'll be solving them step by step and i will show you guys how you can do that coming soon if you look at the bottom you have the update so the update is basically the value of the state at the next time step so it's y n plus 1 is equal to y n plus k1 over 6 plus one third of k2 plus k 3 over 1 third plus k4 over 6 plus order of h5 and now these higher order terms we drop off and the multipliers 1 over 6 and the 1 third these are the ways of approximating the rk4 and they have been proven to be very accurate so we have this problem here we'll be solving the van der Paul oscillator and this is a very common non-linear problem which has been used in science and engineering especially for control design for nonlinear systems. It's basically like a spring, but it has a nonlinear term. The input is given by a sine function, as you can see there. And then we have equations dy over dt and dx over dt. Okay, so that's important. You can represent this in a form like shown here. For our simulation, we will go a step time of 0.01 second, 150 seconds of simulation time. We have initial y is equal to 0.01, x is 0. The state vector can be given by y and x. So that's the y position and that is the x position very clearly. So the first element of that vector is y. So x brackets 1, that's y, and the second one is x. The input is given by sine t times 1 over fifth. So now we have everything. But before I go into the solution, I'll show you guys how C++ works and some quick recap of important commands in C++. So when you look at a program in C++, you have two files, a .h file along with a .cpp file. Inside the .h file, you can define your functions, which you'll be using. And if you want to import this in the .cpp file, you just simply include the, the .h file as you can see there. In our function example, here you can see just a quick example, a function called ArraySum. It takes in an array of integers along with a number 
which is an integer and then it'll return to you an integer so you have to specify which data type the function will give you back and if you look at the function itself you have to copy and paste the function title twice and in your second definition you can actually write what's inside the function so here i'm just doing a simple calculation i'm just adding up the numbers inside this array and returning it back to the user so this is very simple to do if you don't want the function to give you anything back just use void and the function will not return anything that's it all right so let's begin so first of all we have to make your header file that is the dot h file which i'm talking about so make that file and save it as rk4.h when that's done you can include some stuff so let's include cmath cstudio io stream and fstream so this lets you input and output to a file using namespace std to save you don't have to type std all over again so double func1 that's your first function and your second function can be seen there u times 1 minus x squared times y minus x squared that's your func2 takes in t y x and u so now we can define the function itself let's define them both as shown here u1 x2 all that so let's again do f2 is u1 times 1 minus x square etc and return f2 so that's it for the header file make a new cpp file and this is our main code so save that as rk4.cpp as you can see there very clearly first thing you do is that you import the h file i'll just make a comment there so include rk4.h let's put the functions here so you can see very clearly what i'm doing and it'll also help you understand the code better so we have x1 is equal to y position x2 is x position as i said before define your main function let's define some parameters time step time final time number of states number of inputs the state vector and the input vector I'll just put a comment there so you can refer to it. The plus one is so that your index starts at one and not zero. RK4 constants A1, so one over six. A2 and A3 are the same and A4 is also one over six. Next, you can also define the function approximators K1 to K4 and L1 to L4. Initial conditions, very important step time final time initial y initial x start time define the output file sim.csv print an error message if it is not open this is very good programming practice let's output in scientific notation for eight decimal places so you can see very clearly what the outputs are Let's output the file headers. So time, x position, y position, and u. This only prints once, so you don't need to print this inside a loop. It'll print once and that's it. We can proceed now with the simulation loop itself. So it's a while loop here. Let's begin, u1, assign, t to the 1 over 5th that's your input u that calculates at each time condition just two placeholders so you can see and it'll make the code look more neat so now we begin the rk4 steps do k1 and l1 so k1 uses func1 l1 uses func2 k2 uses func1 l2 uses func2 and so on so that's your time step there so just type it as per the rk4 formula if you look at the formula once again then you will get the code better i'm just doing the same exact thing it goes forward by 0.5 right so 0.5 multiplied by the constant 
K4 or L4, it'll just be 1, so you take out the 0.5s there. So look at line 64, that should be 1, okay, not 0.5s. So just fix that after. Update the X position. So here is you get the next state for the next time step. Update the Y in a similar manner. And output everything. So this will output everything to the file during each loop iteration so you can obtain this and make plots after let's put all that inside the while loop so i didn't do that here open bracket put that inside close bracket when the simulation is done we can output the final state so you see that to make sure that the simulation has indeed conversed so let's do that here and put system.pause so that when you stop the simulation, it doesn't shut the screen itself. So here is, oh, just put a multiplication sign there and replace the 0.5 with 1. So you can see how it looks like now. Okay, so that should be it. When you run it, you will see the outputs there in a command line. So you see your final time and your y and x points. Now you can open the sim.csv file and you can see everything here. In C++ you cannot make plots so what I did was I went to MATLAB and I made my plots over there so you see time x y and u so we have a large number number of points we should have about 15,000 so that's 150 divided by 0 0.01 so that's a lot of points right <laughs> so yeah here I'm just scanning everything into MATLAB this is very easy and just make plots you know x y plots you can do whatever you want. Here I'm plotting four graphs in one graph so I can see everything at the same time. If I run this, that's the simulation there. It has converged, it looks good. We have X, Y, U, and also the oscillation as you can see there. So that's it. So guys, that is it for the video about the RK4 method. Um, it is quite an intensive method, but it is one of the most accurate ways of solving differential equations especially if they have something non-linear in them um, it's what Simulink and MATLAB uses and the one benefit is that you can change the step size as you go along so if something occurs very quickly and if you can capture it within let's say 0.1 second you can make it very much smaller so in this way you can capture pretty much everything hope you guys learned something new and with that, that being said I'll see you guys in the next video take care bye bye